Okay, let's see here. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and start promoting you. Uh, we are already live on Facebook. Uh, by the way, we're live streaming on my personal Facebook page going forward. Uh, apparently, the, the Google Facebook gurus say that's better to do that than to put it on our business page. So go figure. Um, learn something new every day. Hey, Kay, good to see you. I'll get you set up here in just a minute. Lisa, Mark, Gil. Awesome. Mike McGrath. Hey, hey, Mike McGrath, I just saw you rescheduled our call for tomorrow. Um, but I do have some good news for you. So I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. Um, on the uh, uh, San Luis uh, Potosi property, that, that one particularly. So, um, hey, Naomi, good to see you. So, Gary, if that leaves a gap in your schedule, throw me in that gap and I'll give up Wednesday. Um, Let's see here. It's 3.30, uh, 12.30, it'll be 12.30 Pacific tomorrow. And then if you, if you want to do that, then uh, and we can use your same link too. I'll just start it. Instead of doing it Wednesday at 1.30, I'll do it tomorrow at 12.30. That's okay with you. Yeah, that works at the 30 minute. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So, so Mike, you didn't you didn't speak. You should have said, Lisa. There's a there's a brokerage fee for that, but you didn't say it quickly enough. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, hey, Nelly, I know you're brand new to the team, and uh, we've got a call coming up here, um, actually tomorrow. So look forward to, to uh, speaking with you for our first official coaching call tomorrow. Let's see, Rob. Good to see you, buddy. Down. In Beautiful St. Pete Beach, Rob Lane. Uh, Randy, I do have an update for you too on um, the portal, okay? Uh, you know, the, the corporate housing portals. Um, the developers are still working on stuff. That's why we haven't been able to move forward, um, but we are definitely moving forward. And we're likely to develop two new portals at the same time, the entertainment one being one of them. Um, so I'll keep you posted on that. Laura, good to see you. Liz, Lou Carlson, always good to see you, buddy. Uh, Brianna, good to see you. Dennis, fellow Yinzer on the on the call, that's good. Good to see you. Kevin Keller. So, Kevin, I got the update from um, Jody. Let me know that you're you had to restart everything over. I thought I thought that would be the case. Uh, if you need any help, uh, obviously reach out and please let us know. All right, I think I have promoted everyone so far, guys. If you're on and you don't believe you can make yourself a video, um, uh, turn on your video, just, just give me a shout out. Um, let's see, I see a few more people popped on here. Hang on one second. Uh, Kathy, good to see you. Kathy, I got your message. So, so Kathy, are we good for um, Thursday at uh, 1230 then? I think, yeah, Thursday at 12th, if you can let me know that, Kathy, that'd be great. Uh, all right, Benny's on, hot dog, how about that? And Rachel, good to see you. Let's see, we still, we keep getting uh, new people signing on. So, uh, Kay, hang on to your seats. Sometimes this takes a few minutes. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Gary. Yes. Gary. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, I heard part of your message, but then I finished joining in, in as a panelist and it cut you out. Oh, so, so are, are we okay then for Thursday at 1230? Yes, this Thursday at 1230 would be wonderful. Okay, now, do you want to do on Zoom or just a regular three-way phone call? I said that it was going to be Zoom, but um, okay. because that's what you usually do. Yeah. Um, that's why I went ahead and supplied you his phone number. Yeah. Um, if you if you could send me his email, or I'll what I'll do is I'll send the link to you, and you can uh -huh. email it from, just forward it to him. Okay. Yep. So that's yeah, right. Be. Right now, I don't have his email, so. <laughs> okay. Thursday, twelve thirty Zoom. Okay, so I got my instructions for that. All right. Thank you. Um, you're very welcome. I'll send yeah, you something. What's that? 
-hmm. I'll set you something up next week after that too with uh, okay. the lady who joined us before on okay. the Monday night call. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, yeah, good to see you, buddy. All right. Hey, guys, what I want to do to start off, uh, Kay's going to help us understand some of the functionality of RPR um, going forward. And Kay, I'll go ahead and give it everybody the disclosures. Kay, Kay is not an attorney no. or an accountant, but no. boy, she sure knows RPR. No, just kidding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd have to put you on the spot. But it's just like us, guys. So it's a class, and we can just relax and be ourselves. But before we start, I want to have Laura jump on, if you don't mind, Laura, and talk about the cash flow one on one game. So if you'd like, can I promote you again to um, co host? And then you can share your screen for a second. Okay. So guys, so okay, hang on just a second. This is something that Laura brought to my attention last week. And I want to take a few minutes to let everybody see what we're doing with cash flow one on one. Okay, take her away, Laura. Okay, hello, everyone. So let me just get my screen here. So for Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he has on his site, once you, you have to register and, um, you know, register for his site. I'm already logged in, but once you log in, you have access to some of his um, cash flow collections. And one of the things he offers is doing the cash flow game, like we talked about. So once you log in, register, put your email address, you click this and it says, give me access to his cash flow. And I've already done all this. And then it'll bring you to um, the game portion of his site. And it looks like this. So let me um, she do it this way. So once I click on here, you can join a free game or we can create our own as a, a GIA team. And so the initial game looks like this. You click on it. And then um, you can just exit out of all the ads. And then you select a game and you can create your own room. You put your name in and kind of like Zoom, you put a password, I can use GIA. And so once you have a password, you're in a private room and you, you can create the game. And it's up to six people per game. And then we can all play together. So the center circle is called the rat race. And then the outward uh, game piece is called the fast track. And so you have to choose a profession and the point in the game is to gain a more passive income than you have debt. So you have money to buy stocks, you have money to buy property and invest. So you can kind of get yourself out of the rat race. Um, it might look confusing just to begin, but once you kind of start playing with people, it's really fun and I've enjoyed it. Yep. Yeah. Tell you what guys, um, whenever I visit my friends Rick and Anna, we always play this. And I remember the very first time we played it, we actually were not, we were playing it wrong, incorrectly. We were making it way more difficult for ourselves when it came to purchasing properties with finance. We were literally like hurting ourselves. And lo and behold, Anna's, Anna's one of those people that like money just sticks to her. I mean, she wins every game. She went, it's unbelievable. It's just, she just has that Midas touch. But it was just humor. So, but once we figured it out the right way, it's, we have fun every time we play it. So here's what I had in mind. We've got a good sized group, but what I thought was if we could, we could do um, like uh, set up three groups, one for the East Coast, one for Central and Mountain, and one for uh, West Coast, include Hawaii in that one. Um, and then play like my thought was play. Um, so we usually play on Fridays. So you could do like a Friday night thing if you want to do that, or you know, we can everybody can vote. But I thought if we had three going on, three groups, it doesn't cost a dime, completely free. Yeah, they are going to hit you with ads. Just be prepared. You're going to pop up with ads all over the place. But that's part of what you get when you get something for free. Um, and then maybe we could have fun with it at the end of the year, have like a like a like a championship series, you know, like a Super Bowl series or something. Um, and I, what I would do is jump in from time to time and, and join in different groups and play. I really do enjoy it. So let's just do a quick vote here. If you could uh, do a hand raise or, um, you know, just type in a chat box, and let me know if, um, you know, if, if you're one, if you want to partic participate in this. Um, Gary, Gina asked to let her in as well. Yep. Yeah, I'm getting. I'm starting to promote people here. 
I just saw a few more pop in. Um, RJ, good to see you, buddy. Rachel, Kevin, Dennis, Betty. They got Betty and Betty, Benny. Uh, let me see. Hey, Benny, let me see if I can find you, Benny. Hang on a second. Um, Benny's Benny's not an agent on the team, guys. He's uh, a personal friend and a private client. He's on tonight, but it could also be um, Benny's son too. Uh, you remember, remember, guys? Remember me telling you about Benny's son Emiliano? How he's 15 years old, and I'm taking him through the uh, vision, goals, action plan process. Remember that about a month ago, and I and I challenged you. So. Because I figured if you if you were up for the challenge, you had to decide if you want to beat or be beaten by a 15 year old. <laughs> so he's I just met with him today. He's an awesome guy, and uh, his dad's awesome too. So um, here's Benny. Let's see, Benny. I'm gonna ask a short video. You might be on your phone. Benny, is that you? It is. How are you, man? Doing good. How are you guys? Pretty good. Hey, everybody meet Benny. Benny, meet the gang. Hey, let me turn my light on one sec. Okay. Um, so this this is interesting. As a matter of fact, um, uh, Michael McGran, you're definitely going to be meeting Benny at some point, I hope. And, um, and uh, we'll talk about that uh, separately. So in any case, um, so what I want to do is this. I want to show you guys the, the Cash Flow 101, let you say you want to participate, and we will do that. And Benny, you know what? That might be something um, that we can get uh, uh, Emiliano in on too. You know, okay. Um, playing cash flow one on one, it's a real good way for him to learn um, all the basics about investing and building businesses and so forth. You know, so sounds good. Yep. Okay. Any questions on cash flow one on one? Everybody okay? Let me check the question box and then Kay, I want to promote you and we'll turn it over to you. Uh, let's see. Out of curiosity, um, if everyone put their hands down, how many people have played it before? Just hands up on if you have played it before. Okay, this will be fun. It's nice when you've got a good mix. Yeah. 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 The newbies, is your, your entertainment for the veterans, you know? Not just kidding. <laughs> Actually, if you, yes. Um, I had a guest that was going to be on, and you just said a couple of minutes ago, it's just us, but you're live on Facebook. Should he not log on? Oh, Lord, no. No, he, he could definitely be on. I didn't realize, I, I didn't recognize any guests. Um, oh, he hasn't logged on yet, but he said if it's not good tonight, he'll get on next Monday. But I said, well, let me just double check. Yeah, absolutely. He can definitely be on uh, tonight's the tool. RPR is an awesome, awesome tool. And like Benny, and he might see some good stuff in there and start asking your respective realtors to use RPR to help you uh, get some deals, you know? Thank so, you. You're very welcome. So, Kay, I'm going to promote you to co-host. And now you can share your screen. So you, you have a Windows computer or a Mac computer? I have a Windows. Okay. If you just hover your cursor around, you should see a green share screen button. Yes. If you click on that, and then you'll get a panel of all your, there you go. Okay, perfect. Okay. So can everybody guys... hear me? Yep. Yay, Kay. Okay. Yep. I have to confess, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this and the first time I've ever used Zoom like this. So bear with me. <laughs> um, how many people have used RPR before? Me, yep. I have. Okay. So we have several people that have used it. Okay, well, I, I will tell you, I am not an expert, but I have enjoyed this tool. And I'm just gonna run through this kind of basic uh, introduction to what RPR is. And then I thought we might go in and, you know, I'll show you kind of what I've done with it and we can play with it a little bit. Um, so first of all, now let me see, how do I get? Okay, I've got my slides here. Now, how do I get them? There we go. So RPR is a part of NARS Technology Company. It's wholly owned by NARS. It has 166 million US properties. And that's what I like it with because I'm a member of just one MLS. And so if I have a property outside my MLS and I need to do comps, you know, I can't do them. 
and I've used used it very successfully. I even did comps on a house I was looking at for my sister in El Paso, Texas, and I live in San Antonio. Um, it's exclusively for realtors. There's no extra charge. You get it free with your NAR membership and the consumer and the public and other people can't get to it. So I kind of like that. We didn't sell this database to anybody. Um, so we'll kind of go over tonight. I thought kind of the, what the homepage is, how to do some searches. Um, we can look at property details. You can monitor market activity and it's got a whole bunch of other resources. Some of them I haven't played with. I've just kind of gotten into it. It has some capabilities to do some of the same stuff that really flow does, but um, it's different. And sometimes when I'm really stumped on a property or I can't find good comps, I'll go into my local MLS and I'll pull comps and see what it says. And then I'll go into RPR and I'll do one there. And um, then I'll kind of merge the two. And sometimes if RPR doesn't show me what I want to see, I'll go back and pull what I think are comps on recent solds. And then you can manually add them in. So it's a very flexible tool. And I like that about it. Um, so it has two um, value estimators in it. One is an automated valuation model. And uh, the estimate is calculated using only public information. And then the other one is what they call the realtor estimated value. And that allows you to put your input and your thoughts into the valuation model. And so it'll start out with the public data and then you can add in specific MLS's active, sold or off market data. And that's why I said I like it's very flexible because I could say, well, this didn't show up here. I think it's a comp and I'll just put the address in and it'll automatically pop it up as a comp. Um, and then they say that because of the way the data is gathered, that this has the highest accuracy of any valuation product available. So Gary, I don't know if you want to challenge that, but that's their claim. Yeah, no, that's okay. Yep. Okay. So we'll take a look at RPR and, um, you know, it's like every other piece of technology, you know, you go to the homepage, you need to get in, you need to play around, you need to see what it'll do. Um, but creating a search is really easy, saving it. And then it actually has a, a place where you can actually go in and pull up any old reports that you've done. And I like that because I've had to go and do that. Something I thought was dead and I thought that, but when I went in, I thought, oh, I wonder if I could pull that back up. And I did, and I was didn't have to recreate the whole thing. So I thought that was a nice feature. Um, <clears throat> so if you haven't, I would encourage you to, to go ahead and log in to RPR. It's NAR rpr.com and it has learn and help features and it's got a whole there's got a whole list of webinars and things you can take to, to look at it <clears throat> it's also got good um, you know it'll walk you through and tell you exactly where to go how to what to hit what to click and i like that because you know i'm i'm always nervous i'm going to make a mistake and so if i can go in and say click here okay click there and then i can follow that it's got a good resource center. And the other thing I like is you can call them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> and uh, and their, their support number is there. Sometimes you have to wait a little bit for a call back, but they've always been very supportive. And if I get into a jam and I can't figure something out, they've been very, very helpful. So there's also a blog. I'm not a blog follower, so I really can't talk about the blog, um, but it's there. So here is an example, you know, that you can use these filters to pick any classes that you want to take. And, uh, you know, it'll give you the ABCs of RPR. If you want to build a team, if you want to, you know, if you're in a buyer uh, situation, they have multiple reports that I think are really good. Some of them are pretty long and I usually cut out some pages, but, but they're very thorough. And if you have a high C personality that you're giving a listing presentation to and you want to pull comps for, this is the report to use. Um, as I said, they have a live chat, <clears throat> the training area, the phone number, and you know, help. This is just part of, part of the dashboard. Okay, that's the slide presentation. So I'm going to get out of that, and then I'm going to go in and minimize my screen, and I'm going to pull up a new tab and go into RPR. So guys, if you're on now, if you're able to do a split screen or you have a second screen, 
um, and you've not used your RPR much, it might be good to, to, to turn it on in a new tab. Um, you can kind of follow along with, but to try to focus on what Kay's showing you. Yeah, as, is is everybody, can everybody see my screen? You're gonna have to share, you have to hit the share screen button again, Kay. Okay. And then pick the, when you go to panel of screens, pick the one in the upper left-hand corner. Okay, it'll automatically let's share see. whatever, it'll automatically share whatever you want you're on, you know. Okay, uh, where do, how do I get back to Zoom? Uh oh, did you lose down, me? Yeah, down at the bottom, you'll, on your taskbar, the, usually the very bottom of your computer screen, you'll see all your open sessions like Word documents, the, you know, Chrome, and the folder. Yeah, I see the Zoom and I'm clicking on it. Yep. I don't know how to see how to share my screen. I saw it before. Yeah, hover, hover your, you have to go, you have to click on that, um, the one that shows the cameras. Well, let me rephrase this. Now at the very bottom next to your Google symbol, your Word documents, so anything you have up your file folder, the one that's a white box with the blue and white camera in the middle, that's your Zoom screen. You want to you want to click on that where you're the left clicker. Yeah, I've got that. Okay. Now you should be able to hover your cursor and that green share screen button will pop up again. Well, I'm in some sort of a, I'm in some sort of a. It's on the bottom. Yeah, I know, I, I've seen it and I know where it should be. I just can't get to that view. Okay, this is my worst nightmare. No, no, <laughs> wait, Kate. Okay, go to your right hand side at the very top. You should have a like a, uh, square box and it says view. Can you click on that real quick? Maybe that'll take you into, into the bigger screen where you can see everyone. And then you'll be able to go down to the bottom of your screen. Do you see it on the top right? The other thing could be that her screen is 100% and she needs to bring it down a little bit. Yeah, let me see yep. if I can. Because when I have everyone on the screen, yeah. Then on mm -hmm. the bottom part portion, it tells me how many participants chat and then share screen. Yeah, I, I know exactly where it should be. I'm trying to just show you how Here to Here we go. It. Let me see. Does that work up any better? No. We, no. we can see you. Um, but what I'm wondering is you're on a Windows computer. Yeah. So if you look up in the upper right hand corner, you'll see the word view, the V I. EU should be upper right hand corner with a like a tic tac toe grid next to it. Real time. Yeah, right now it's wanting me to sign in, join a meeting. Oh no, host a meeting. Sign You're in. I'm already in a meeting, so. I know. I don't know how I got into here. Um, well, what, what happened if you? Mary, if you take host back, will yeah, that help? Yeah. Because yep. maybe, and then maybe we can re-host her again. Yep. Okay. And then get it going in that way. So now, let me get out of here. Real Don't quick. you love technology? Yes. I love it when it works. <laughs> yep. Okay. It's amazing when it works. So now, okay, I'm going to um, do the, hang on one second. Uh, participants, panelists, um, K. Okay. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove co-host privileges and I'm going to give it right back to you. Okay, now. Um, now you should be able to, at the very bottom of your computer screen, if you see the white box, hover over it with your cursor and you see it has the blue screen with a white camera symbol in the middle. Yeah, I can see it and I click on it, but it's got me. Don't click on it. Don't click, Don't click on it. So go go back to it again, but hover over it without clicking it yet. Okay. Now you should see one that says Zoom Cloud Meetings with a blank white thick screen, and then to the right it'll see you'll see the actual panel with all of us on it. Very small, mm -hmm. small. View. Do you see that? No, I'm wondering if I ought to get out and just come back in. Um. You can do that. That that would work too. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me try that. Let me try that. Okay. okay we'll, we'll see you in two shakes of a lamb. Okay.
That's okay. <laughs> this too shall pass. We'll get here. I'm gonna I'm gonna entertain a troops. I've got some good ones. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, while we're waiting, does anybody have any questions on any subject, the transaction you're working on? Um, I see everything I should see. Okay. okay there we are. Yep. So I go to share screen, host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, so let me take care of that. Dang Kay, you are fast. All right. Where there's a will, there's a way, by golly. Yep. Okay. Now you should be able to share again. Okay. Now let me see if I can. Ta -da! Okay. Now I'm trying to go to. There you go. Okay. Can everybody see now? Mm -hmm. Yay. Yep. Okay. Well, again, this is the home screen. Um, well, there you go. Okay, up here, you, you it gives you a thing if you want to search my map, if you want to do a neighborhood search, a school search, market activity. It'll also do commercial, which I haven't played with much, but it does do commercial. And then in terms of marketing, it does allow you a prospecting uh, capability, and it, you can also create flyers in here. But what I use it mainly for are the reports. And it'll give you like a property report. I use it a lot for a seller's report when I do uh, comps. And it will give you a valuation workbook. It'll give you a mini report and a market activity. It's very, very thorough. Um, and then if you go over here, it gives you, you know, you can learn about this. One of the most important things, though, I will tell you is when you start out, go to your profile. And when you click on your profile, you have to put in your information and your time zone and all your brokerage information. And then it, um, it gives you the capability. You put in your MLS, your license number. You can have that appear on your reports if you want. Um, and it'll give you updates. But over here, it'll also connect to zip forms or DocuSign if you use that. And it can take take the reports or, or take, you know, uh, forms and help you get them signed. I will tell you, I have not done that. So I'm not an expert on that. And there is a mobile app. And I also have not done that. You can also add in uh, any partners that you have that you might want to um, market with your reports. And, and that will print, you can put escrow officers, title companies, anything you want. You just add them in here. And so set up your profile, first of all. And then like when you go to my work, if I look at my markets, I've pulled up, you know, these are my markets and I can look at for sale, for lease, price changes, anything pending, closed. I put in the key, the key markets that I work in in San Antonio and I can just really easily click on them and, and they'll give me lots of market data information, which is helpful to send out to clients. Um, let's go to a report. And like I said, I'll, I'll kind of walk through how to create a CMA. And it's, it's, it, it's pretty easy because it tells you here's how to do it. So, you know, I, I usually will go uh, create a report. And what, what's it doing? It's got a mind of its own now. Okay. Okay, I know, For first thing you do is put in the address of your subject property right here. And then you would put in your drop down box, do you want it for sale? Do you wanna look at everything for sale, for lease? Um, you wanna look at active, active under contract, holding, pending, closed, withdrawn, et cetera. And you can also click on anything if you just want public records. And then um, you can pick exactly the type of property you're looking for. Uh, you can put in your price parameters, much like any MLS. And then you can go to bedrooms and bathrooms. And then you click on your filters. And it'll tell you kind of all, your, all the filters that you have in your search. And then you can click, 
you know, so if I put in like, um, I'll do one I did 525. Okay, and let's put that we want to look at all for sale active under contract. And this is single family. And I want to look at a price of 400 to 550. And I want to look at three to four bedrooms. And then I'll save it. And all your save work is right there. So let's say, you know, this tells me everything that's in here that's pending. This is new. Um, and I, I happen to know my property is about 2,400 square feet. So I would click on that one. I might click on this to see how many I get. This one's a little bigger. Well, that's a condo, though. I don't want condos. Um, and I usually, you know, and I probably would take more care than what I'm doing here, but I would pick, you know, three or four. And uh, then I have them sort from the highest price up. And then I've got all my criteria in here. And then I can pick keyword. I can put owner occupied. Um, I can put the year built. Let's say this area, I'll put 1950. Oops. And then if I want to get, uh, if I want a two or three car garage, I can put it up at fixer upper, if it's horse property, if it has granite, if it's a single, I want a single story, I want it to have granite. Um, that's all I can see. So I'll click like this. It says there's no properties. Oh, great. <laughs> um, well, that wasn't a very good example, was it? Let's see. Let me just take these out. Okay. If I get anything else. Darn it. <laughs> well, I'm not doing very good here. Let's see. Let me show you. Oh, this is one. Oops, okay. Yeah. Yes. Excuse me, this is Benetta. I see you have four bathrooms in there. Why don't you try it with fewer than four bathrooms? Oh, I've got four bathrooms. That's my problem. Thank you. I was thinking that was four bedrooms. No All more. right, let me go back. Thank you. Good catch. Good catch, Benetta. All right. Yes, let's take this down to two. All right. Now let's try. I want four bathrooms. Yeah. yeah. All right, oh, so yeah, now let's we can, like, create a report. Gina, oh, Gina, it's because we don't want to walk that far, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I also want someone else to clean them, but I still would like four bathrooms. <laughs> if okay. you grew up as a kid in a single bathroom house, you cannot have enough bathrooms. Yeah, that's true. All right, let's try this and see. We got this and see if it'll search. 
no, what in the world am I doing wrong? I've never had this kind of problem with it before. Um, what is this? So on bathrooms, you have less than two. So you have a out? maximum of yeah, two Yeah, less than two. Nah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. your baths again. Okay, there's the property. Nice. Okay, so this is what it closed for. This is what the lease price was. This is what it was, the RVM value was. This is what it says the refined value was for editing it. Um, it gives you property facts and it asks you to go through and do if, you know, if there's anything different than what you had. Um, Cause see the square footage on this was different. So that was a change I made. Um, gives you the schools, price history, livability index. It'll go through re interior details, um, foundation, lot size, a lot of detail, a whole lot of detail in the report. And what I like is when you do get a report, if you put um, create a report, I'm going to do a seller's report because it's longer. It'll customize your um, all your information on this and it'll put all my information on it. And, um, and then I can include like, um, So you can do that and it'll, you can email it to him and uh, it'll send the whole report directly to him. So if I put in, and then you run the report and it'll tell you that the report is running and it'll take a few minutes for the report to finish running. And um, this will put, pull out the whole 81 pages. Normally I go in and I cut out some of it and then it'll, it'll automatically give me a little ding and to let me know my report is ready. And then I can go through and review it. And if I wanna edit it, I can edit it. And uh, it just it gives a really nice looking presentation, which is what I like. So we just have to wait a minute for it to come out. Um, Sounds like a doorbell when it's done. Yes, exactly. So ding dong. Mm. While we're waiting, again, you can see it has a property report, property fire, it'll do a mini report. If you wanna really get into detailed valuations, you can do the whole valuation workbook. It gives a nice market activity report, um, which I like because it'll, um, it'll go through, um, and, and kind of give lots of ed educational stuff. And if you have somebody who's interested in the neighborhood and worried about crime rates and all that kind of stuff or schools, these reports are really good as well. As you can see, the mini report is 12 pages. The seller's report is 81 pages. And if you view the sample of what we're gonna get, it's gonna look like this. Hey, which one then, gives you the crime, which one gives you the crime reports? Uh, I think it does, okay. um, but it'll give you all these facts. And it'll give property photos of your property. And then it pulls a sheet on, uh, it'll give you historical. So if you have a, a place that's been renovated, they can see the before and the afters. Gives you a nice property history report. 
Okay, so I'm gonna download my report here pretty quick. Okay, so we'll go through this report. You can see what it looks like. And it shows you where it is on the map. It gives you the refined value. Goes through all the facts. So you can double check your facts and make sure they're accurate. And then it'll go through extended facts. And this gives you a nice aerial view of the, of the property. And it gives you directions on how to get there, what the school systems are, um, refined value. And like if this, this is a hot market, so I might, you know, when I'm doing my reports initially, uh, and we didn't go through this because I was trying to be quick, you can push this up and say, this is a really hot market, so I'm gonna move this dial over here and that'll bump it up. If the home's exterior condition isn't great and needs some work, then I might move that dial. If it needs updating, I might pull this back here. If it's got a larger lot size, I'll pull it up here. And then uh, how it relates to other properties, I can, you know, this one would have been about right there. And then privacy is good. And so you can change these dials and you see what it does then to the valuation and what it adds to, um, to the report in terms of what the property is going to be worth. Um, this talks about the room additions that it had, that the kitchen was remodeled and updated, the bathrooms were mid-range remodeled. And so that added 27,000 to the basic. These are pictures of the property. Gives, again, some more historical this is the property history. So you can see this is a hot market and it's going up. And this particular zip code is going up higher than others in the county. Mm -hmm. um, gives you the tax records. Um, tells you who the previous owners were and who it was financed with. Um, this will tell you if there's distressed or if there's market assessed. And some of this gets a little confusing to me. So sometimes I'll put this in, sometimes I won't. Um, usually it's not this complex. This shows you market activity and you can see this has been a fairly hot market. Um, not a lot of people sell and down here you can see these two areas or other markets I work with and and uh, not much is selling their high dollar. This gives you a listing price versus sales price so people are getting more a little more than uh, asking value about 3% more and it tells you, you know, and they're going fast, most of these sold. This house, particular house was put on the market and sold in three days, so. Mm -hmm. um, and we got over asking, but then we negotiated repairs and it came out right about asking price. Um, this tells you on pricing adjustments, what we're seeing in the market. Um, median sales price versus sales volume. I said, some of this gets a little much and, and I'll pick and choose depending on who I know my seller is, what I'll pull it, put in there. It'll go through the listing of uh, inventory in this particular area. There's 66 that are available and this price per bedroom, price per square foot. Age range is 57 years old in this particular neighborhood. Average bedrooms is four or no two. Sales count by bedroom. So this house is larger than most of those. These are median days in RPR. And you can see they're, they're not on very long for this zip code. This gives you a map of market activity. I probably would discard because I know the area well, everything over here, and I would just look right in here. And then it gives you, you know, lowest listing, median and highest, which is nice. And this is what I like the best is it gives you, this is the subject property. This is a comp. And you can actually, when you're preparing the report, you can go in and click on this and you can, uh, make notes down here on this one's larger it's more better maintained it's in better condition 
or has a has a concrete driveway versus you know subject property has an asphalt driveway and you can actually customize all of this stuff and then it pull and this is where i think it goes a little overboard it gives you every single comp that you picked and it'll show you where it's located and it'll give you all the data on that particular uh, comp that you picked. And sometimes I'll use those, most of the time I, I don't, I just use the summary. Okay. So I don't know, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I like it. Any comments or questions? I got a bunch. Okay. Um, the first one, when it has the address and the directions, is there any way that you can tweak that? Or is it going to just go automatically off of whatever Google Maps or wherever it's getting its information from? Um, I've never tried to do that. I would think it probably comes from Google Maps. All right. Because sometimes you don't want someone to drive in a certain direction because God knows what's there. Uh, yeah. The second one, you know that, um, oh, does it ever miss comps? When you put all that stuff in, does it miss a good comp ever? Or do you know? Um, I have added some comps that I thought that it didn't pick up that I will add in. That's why I usually do comps on MLS and write down the addresses. And then I do this report. And if there's some addresses aren't, I can put that address in and it'll automatically add it. Perfect. You um, can actually go in, you can look for comps and uh, yeah. it, it, it gives you the MLS information. If you click on the house, it actually brings up the MLS data. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's um, how I use it. Yeah. Okay. That sliding scale thing, <clears throat> is it just a low, medium, high, or is it actually slide? Like, can I pick something that's between low and medium? It slides. You can put it wherever okay. you want. And I really like that. Okay. And then, um, this is just a comment. It's not a question at all, but the selected market activity, the one that, that shows everything that's going on, just the overview map with all the dots all over it. I yeah. take that puppy and I go door knocking with that if I had that. Yeah. That is a great one to, to pull. I pull some, I would literally pull a couple of pages out of this and I door knock maybe that. Well, maybe not that one. Um, but I pull a couple of pages that worked good. Um, maybe that one, if I sat down and really kind of analyzed it, but go down further, there was another one. Just way down towards the bottom. Keep Market going, activity. Keep going. Nope. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I take that one on door knocking. I would definitely take that one. Okay. Keep going. 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 Down. 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 Right there. That one. Yeah. I would send. I would go out with that. Or even if I was going to do a mailing, that would be one of the things that I would do for a mailing. That's a good one. We celebrate it. It's not, it doesn't matter if you're religious or not. We celebrate it and acknowledge it for way you. There we go. So, okay, those are my comments and questions. Anybody else who's used this, you know, more often than I do, feel free to chime in and help each other. Um, on the other reporting, I mean, I really like this feature. I mean, it, this system has come a long ways since it first came out years ago. It was um, not nearly this uh, sophisticated and easy to use. You know, it's come a long ways in the last few years. But have you used it for, for custom reporting, like you can, where you can custom create your own report instead of using CAN reports? Um, like we used to create something called a school report. It turns out it's very easy to do in RPR, where you can um, select uh, active and sold mm -hmm. by school district, you know, and it give you like a bra like the brackets, the price ranges, number of sales, things like that. Yeah. I've never tried that. You might be able to. I don't. I've never tried it. It's a great idea. It's in custom reporting, and there's a tutorial on how you can create custom reports. I just haven't done it with this this new version here. It's been the yeah. when it first came out, they didn't have that. We had to do the school report manually ourselves. And it was a long painstaking uh, process. <laughs> so we did too. We had to draw the boundaries on the MLS and then save them. Yes, you can you can actually go in and draw boundaries and it'll in the tutorial, it, it shows you exactly how you can go in, you can draw boundaries, you can pick exactly what you want, and you can custom almost anything. I just, you know, there's um 
uh, what the heck is the name of it? Um, anyway, it was one of the tutorials that I took when I first started playing with it, but you can go in and draw. I want to just see this and it'll pull it out and it allows you to customize very easily. Okay. I just pulled one of the longest reports. This is the one I use most frequently and uh, it's got everything in it. Like I said, I usually cut out the end of the end of the pages. And then what I like is right at the very end, it gives you um, recommended pricing strategies and it'll tell you, you know, high, medium, low. And I think those adjustments are high, but I don't know. And then you can get every, and then it, it'll, it'll give you a net sheet. And you can play with that. And then it tells you where the data came from. And then of course it has the, all the other advertisings. But, um, so I usually cut mine off with a net sheet. And uh, yeah, I never include okay, that. This in is create yeah, the, I, I've never been able to get the numbers in the in the net sheet. Have you been able to? So do you just print? Because once you run I it, just, report, but I, put, I usually print a blank. I just print the net sheet right. and I fill the numbers in. Gotcha. Because <laughs> I was going to say, I've never been able to get to plug the numbers into the, mm -hmm. the net sheet. I don't number. think it auto populates. Right. I wish it did, but yeah, I, I haven't done, I do that by hand. Well, that's pretty cool stuff. It's really, it really is neat. And I, um, I was going to say, let me think if I can, oh, when you go in and you want to like search looking for a map, oh, I don't know if it's going to do this. Anyway, one of these um, report, learning things that I, 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 I was playing with, you know, you can actually go in and it'll, uh, it'll uh, create it. And I, I don't know, I haven't played around with this investor analysis, but I, you know, I know at one time it, it was pretty thorough and it'll also give you, you know, opportunity zones. Can you click on that opportunity zones? I want to see what that offers. Um, I keep getting questions on that more and more. Um, because I think there's going to be more and more opportunities coming out of the road here. Let's see here. Research. You do a map search. Yeah, I was going to. It keeps wanting to tour. It's just oh. to show you how. It's like a wizard. Yeah, that's what it's doing. And you can um, exit out in the corner, Kay. You can exit out in the X. Yes. Okay. So if we search using a map. It keeps coming back. It, yeah, just you can just click through it and, and let it play its game. It works. I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, you go ahead and go let it go through the same thing on uh, some of the state uh, real estate commission websites. They have this. It's been happening all the other states. You can't get past it. You just have to click through it. You know? Yeah. So, okay. So now is that saying? the same thing just yeah i just do do it because i think they changed it so you you need to do it yeah yeah so click on the research to the right of that yeah. there you yeah. go and then you can pull up your property search or the school that's or whatever search. so now do map search it's showing oh. you the steps there you go okay so if we want to find opportunity zones is that what we, okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's scroll down and see what those, that map looks like. <clears throat> no properties were found. So nothing in the opportunity zones. I, I was hoping it would show us the opportunity zone map. Yeah, now click, next click to show geography search for. Ah, okay. So maybe these are the opportunity zones. I would bet these would be the opportunity zones knowing San Antonio. The ones right that are here. Shaded. Yeah, okay. the orange ones. 
and see here, here's where it'll let you and you can do like a polygon and you can actually take and draw So it will let you do that. Okay. Um, so I wonder if there are any properties in any of the opportunity zones in and around San Antonio, because there were some big zones. Yeah. Coming out of the south part of the, of the town. Yes. In the rural areas. And, um, yeah. It'll give you traffic counts, distance, drive times. You just pick a point and it'll pop that in. Um, let's see. How do I get out of this? Okay. Oh. Yeah, the opportunity zones. Let's see. Where do we go? Because what I'm thinking of, guys, is land. If we yeah. can find land and opportunity zones, mm -hmm. believe me, you know, combine that with what um, Ron Williams showed us last week with a hoodle. Um, if he knows all the, if we can find all the builders. And we can find land in those opportunity zones. Um, you know, we have something to present to our investors, right? Yeah, absolutely. Affordable housing and those opportunities. These zones. are all the incorporated cities in the city of San Antonio. These are all separate incorporated cities. Gotcha. But yeah, when we looked at those opportunity zones, I don't know how to get back to it, but Go yeah. Go to the top and hit opportunity zones under view ge geographics show geographies right down here in, in the map, okay? Oh, in the map? Oh, show geographies? Yeah, click that, yeah. carrot, and then come down. Oh, good, the thank zones. you. That should bring yeah. it up. See, and this is central downtown. Mm -hmm. and this is over here just south of the military base. This is up off I-35. This one surprises me. None of these surprise me because they're very poor areas. Right. This is where the Brooks Air Force Base used to be, and they've um, they've closed it down and made it an opportunity, kind of a a special incubator, is what they call it, an incubator. And there's a lot of incubation activity going on right in here, and I think that's part of where some of this opportunity zone stuff is coming from. Does it but, give yeah. you a definition of opportunity zone? What they're defining? I think it's it's defined by uh, the county and and there's special aren't there special tax breaks for it? Yeah. yeah. Capital gains. Yeah. So, um, the old days it was called CRA Community Reinvestment Act and what they did yeah. is they gave very low interest rate loans to anybody who was willing to take a risk of building or developing in those areas and and of course we did a lot of that and uh. The time interest rates were eight and nine percent, and we were getting three percent loans. But now opportunities, unless I'm correct, correct me if there's more to it, guys. But I think what it has to do with more now is they they reduce your capital gains burden if you invest in their that's our opportunity zone. Is that is that your understanding, guys? Or? Yeah. This this says opportunity zones are an economic development tool that allows people to invest in distressed areas in the United States. Their purpose is to spur economic growth and job creation in low-income communities while providing tax benefits to investors. There's 8,764 of them federally designated in the U.S. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sounds like yeah, a great they're, opportunity. They're, they're kind of they're trying to beef up the downtown area and... This area was a very high crime area. I think this is where Toyota went in. And so they're trying to get people to build stuff around Toyota. And then this area, I've seen a lot of activity in here. It used to be, you wouldn't look past here. And it, it was, you know, it's not the greatest part of town. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I've seen some amazing things around the country over the years. Oh yeah, it's amazing how you see these places completely turn around. Yep. I mean, I've noticed some neighborhoods coming in here. There's a lot of new building around Lackland and this area, and it might be because of some of this uh, opportunity zone stuff. Yep. How many Doobie Brother fans are there out there? <laughs> <laughs> so you look in the southeast right here, and you got China Grove. 
Yeah. We got China Grove. That's awesome. We have Tommy Lee Jones and who's the other actress that was here? Um, oh, she was a redhead. Anyway, she was a singer. She was really great. Hmm. Car. Na uh, na something What's car. Anyway, she lives here. And then, of course, we have George Strait. I'll have to brag and say my son went to school with Bubba Strait, and I used to have to dress up to go to the soccer games because George would come to the games. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Anything else y'all want to look at? Yeah, go, go back up towards the top. I want to see what some of the other capability is. Um, I'm really interested in gathering data. I, want, I, like, I like reports that show me, um, you know, if I know the overall San Antonio area has inventory of like 30 days, but some of the opportunity zones have, have inventory for six months. See, I know that's, they're going to be good deals there. And I know it's an opportunity zone, but I also know from experience, um, somebody has got to be first and usually whoever's first makes the most money, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, Anything I can get my hands on data wise is always, is always good. I think, I think what we'll do is um, I'm going to see if I can get somebody to figure out the custom reporting. Cause it's been several years, I think three or probably four years now since we did that. Um, they have a, bo a button on it where she had the tutorial thing that had right on there custom. Right on, Somewhere right. not this screen. It yeah, probably under reports. Well, the reports are just all the different kinds you can get. Trade area analysis. Yep, that would be a good one. Um, property report, commercial reports, picking rate. Aha, here we go. Yeah. Trade area analysis, that because that's going to probably give you the uh, stuff that's like census related. Uh, industries represented, um, demographics, things like that, you know. In fact, click on view sample and extra trade area report. Let's just see what pops up. So for anybody that's on the commercial mastermind, this was this was right up a rally, you know. And apparently you get free free shipping on a dress if you buy one too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to get rid of that. No thanks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we got a few commercial folks on the call here. I, I would definitely entertain using this in your booklet, um, or at least put a link to it in your booklet. You know, create the report, uh, save it so you get a, a link like in Google Drive. Then when you build your booklet, you can put this in there. Just say for trade area report, click here um, for whatever area you're in. You could have multiple ones too. So. Or you can give them a sample and ask if they want a trade area report for their area to, you know, call you, email you, text you, and you're going to call with them and do a trade area report just for them. And that's how you communicate with commercial people. You know, give them a sample of what you have, offer it to them for their area, and get a conversation going. Okay. Well, this is good stuff. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Does anybody, does, would either of you like to see something in RPR that we haven't done tonight? And we may not know how to do it all, but we can at least click on it and get started and see how it works, you know? If you sign up for their uh, emails and stuff, you'll actually get uh, texts or an emails. Uh, telling you about upcoming training classes. They have very good training classes. Yeah, the training is excellent. It is. Yep. Best thing I can suggest is get in here, put your own house in there or, or your neighbors or your mother's or just pick an address yeah. and start playing with it. That's how you're going to learn it. That's the yeah. best way to learn it. That's a good there's, there's an 18 page uh, commercial trade area report. Mm -hmm. Which looks like it's got some good stuff. Soccer moms. Well, see, this is the kind of stuff that investors need, especially if they're investing out of their area. Or looking to go into different territories, they they need this information, you know. 
help them determine where to go. Hey, Kay, if you wouldn't mind, back up towards the top under the marketing tab. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. You click on prospecting for commercial clients. You want one. what? Prospecting for commercial clients? Yep. yep. Sellers so, or buyers? Sellers. Sellers. Yep. Let's see what it's going to ask us for. Map search, school search, neighborhood search, residential market activity search. Um, okay. Now you can enter your criteria. Go yep to toggle to the left. Okay. Yeah, I toggle to commercial. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to do in terms of type? Yeah, let's see. Uh, um, let's do sale. Uh, we don't want any. Well, let's see. Close for drawing, cancel the expired um you click on a expired withdrawn canceled and and leave the yeah there you go you want canceled too yeah but what i'm think what i'm seeing here is I, what i was hoping to see is it's going outside the listings they've already had on the system to like the county data it doesn't look like it's doing that but let's go with that and then property type uh you, you click public records it might was public records one of the options or? Yes. It was? Go back, okay. okay. See it up the top right? Uh, bingo, there you go. Yep. Uh, do, do for sale again, for sale and public records. Well, it's not gonna do that. That's right, because it's, it's in the public records. So, so I'm sorry, go back to public records. Yep. Uh, and and uh, do, do sold, go back, do um, 2002 to 2012. You can yeah. use the little calendar logos too to help select. Oh, the I probably yeah, I probably could have done that. Okay, all right. Um, and a property type, uh, do um, click on uh, let's see, just click on multifamily. It's multifamily. Okay. Okay. And we're price, not about price or yeah, right. Let's go ahead and see what they get. Should be a bunch. Okay, let's see here. And we did that. Mm -hmm. All right. Public records, multifamily. Um, I think you just get to hit search at this point. Yeah. Update and search. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So we you got, got a like, couple. That's a lot yeah, of my family. One thousand seven hundred and thirty-two. So, so um, all right. That's pretty good. I didn't see any other. Click click on the filter button. See if that gives us more criteria. Oh, that's weird. You're doing this to me all day today. Yep. Okay. Um, lot building. Click on the building one. Where the, the building tab saw. The left of filters. Yep. There you go. Building square footage. Okay. All right. It's not not very robust, but it, it's it's a start. You know. <laughs> um, you want to look at acres. Yeah, that's okay. I was just trying to, if we can narrow it down, if we were able to narrow it down like Rulee Flow does by see if they've been paying their, their property taxes, um, things like that. But I don't think it gets that, that detailed. Doesn't look like it. I don't know what this data layers looks like. Does that help? No, yeah, well, I'm not sure, but uh, oh, here we go. Demographic indicators. Okay. Data layers. 
Concentration of distressed. Where do you see that, Gina? Oh, it is residential real estate concentration of distressed. Yep. It's, there you go. See if that narrows it down. And then what I want to do is then click on one of those little square boxes and see what the information is that it gives us. Okay, we got the owner's names, um, beautiful details. Must be a duplex. Yep. This is demographics. Um, Guy's name and his address. Yep. Okay. Tax information says for the Stupid um, question. What are the three dots to the right of the title? Any title? We have seen it next to tax. Oh, okay. okay. Let's say D yeah. Oh, Flat. all right. Never mind. Hey, we got mortgage records and deed recordings. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this was good stuff, you know? Um, I wish it was, we, I wish more of that data was searchable. Yeah. But that's okay. Um, this is what I've been using RPRs when we're looking for a second home in Florida. This yep. is the main tool that I use to find out if they're asking prices just like ridiculous because of the market or if it's reasonable. I also look to see, you know, what the mortgage is, if there is any, so I know, you know, what, what they might have to have. You know, and we're fortunate in being realtors that we have access to this because the general public does not typically. So you can run this outside of your MLS? Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cool, Beans. Thank yeah, I you. I can find out everything about your house right here. Yep. <laughs> well, there you go. Yep. That and HomeSnap works that way, too. I do yep. love me some HomeSnap. What was that? Cold Snap? HomeSnap. Home home I home tell snap. people to put it on their phones, not real estate agents. And when they see, like, delivery drivers and such like that, and I'm like, if you see a house with the grass that's knee high, take a picture of it. Your buyers can do the same thing too. If your buyers can't find anything and they're in the lower price points, teach them how to go after distressed properties and go find them. Drive so I tell them dog. to take a picture of HomeSnap and that gives them all the information and just send it over to me. Hmm. Interesting. Yep. It's fun. <laughs> Real estate is fun and reports are fun and data is fun. Yep. Well, it's, it's education plus information plus action. That's what gives you results, you know? So it's the, sometimes the, the search, the investigation, if you just can be a little bit patient, it takes a little bit of time, but boy, it'll save you bundles and bundles of time later on by only dealing with the right owners of the right properties. You know what I mean? Instead of broadcast marketing and then the weed through, kiss all those frogs, here you, you, you narrow the search down dramatically, you know? Yeah. So and that's that's one of the keys to success. So okay. I'm all for weeding out the frogs. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Kay, this is this has been really good. I appreciate you taking the time to prepare and and, and show us this in great detail. You know, I know I know Betty uses it. I know several agents that use it. And um I can see why, you know. So it's not perfect, but it it hey. It's free. We don't, you know, I mean, you pay for through your dues, but essentially there's something you don't have to pay for out of your pocket, so to speak, you know? Yeah, my, statement, my statement is if you're not using it, you should be using it. Yep. Yeah. The, the amount of information here is invaluable. Yeah. Is it, Rob, can you use this on your phone too? Have you ever used it on your phone? Uh, I have used it on my phone. It's not as easy, but okay. you can use it on your phone. Okay. I'm normally using it on my phone all the time. Do you, Carl? Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mainly use it on my phone instead of the computer. Okay. Unless I'm trying to do reports. Uh, and thank you, Cable, because uh, <laughs> I wasn't that proficient at reports. 
Well, I did a quick and dirty, but when you really get in and you can, I mean, I can spend hours adjusting and writing notes and, you know, I have to watch it because I'll get into analysis paralysis. <laughs> you got to move. That's what I want. I want to know how to do the adjustments. I want to know what figures to use for adjustments. So well, if you put in and you move that little bar back and forth, it calculates it automatically. Yeah, and then if I you think it's, in, I want to go into the one like where they're like appraisers. Oh yeah. Aspect of it and be able to make some of those adjustments. And I, I just don't have that skill. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of it is you're, you know, you're, you're guessing based on the market. And I, you know, I have some other resources that I have about, you know, what, what a newly remodeled bathroom goes for versus one that's not remodeled. And sometimes I'll take that cost per bedroom and I'll look at that and see if I want to play with that and I'll add it in or take it away. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, there's also, Rob, uh, sometimes you can Google stuff like that, like current um rate you know the current range of adjustments for appraisals and um you know albemarle county something like that uh we used to, we used to do that when we had to do bpos for for banks or we got we got foreclosure listings from them they made us do all that work of course we weren't appraisers but we could we could get the adjustments they come in tables but it is very it's very um um subjective objective because yes it, it, it is i mean you'll like you'll one neighborhood the difference between a one-car garage and a two-car garage would be ten thousand dollars but another neighborhood would be a ten thousand dollar adjustment i mean a twenty thousand dollar adjustment excuse me um so it's 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 uh you gotta really you know some somebody's gotta know the data you know um but you can probably get over time you just get better at it you know you just get better at it. So hopefully, uh, and by the way, if you ever do BPOs, sometimes the, the asset manager giving you the BPO will give you their own ranges. They'll say, hey, if you have to make adjustments, here's the here's the table with all the adjustments we use, you know, for extra bed bedroom and extra bathroom, you know, big yard, small yard, all those kind of things. So oh, that would be gold. Yeah, that'd yeah. be great if they give it to you. Wow. <laughs> yep. The only thing is, is if you ever done a BPO before, they're going to say, "Well, you know what? This is easy money. We'll give you a hundred dollars." And uh, guess what? You'll go back and redo that thing five times. It'll it won't be two hours. It'll be ten hours. And you're working for minimum wage. You know? Yeah. <laughs> they don't give a hundred dollars anymore, Gare. Yeah. What do they What do they give now? Well, the last time I heard it was like 50 bucks and going down. It's so stupid and such a waste uh, of energy. Yeah. Craig, you've done it before too. Yeah. Um, and the a couple of, two or three years ago, I had a company that asked me to um, do BPOs for them. And I think it was like 30 or 35. Isn't that crazy? They were yeah. like 200 yeah. bucks when they first started and then it went down to a hundred and it just keeps on going down. And that's what happens if you're a commodity and you have no value. It's just a big old race to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's going to win, down. but not yeah. us. What? They, well, they would trick you. They would say, you know, you do BPOs for us and we'll give you some listings and that they never comes, you know? Mm -mm. Yep. So we got wise to that years ago. Hey guys, I tell you what. It sounds, it, it, does anybody have any further questions, or something you else you want to bring up related to this or the cash flow game? I have something not related to either one, so I'll wait and see if anyone's got something related to these. Okay. Well, I will tell you, I have an idea on the cash flow game. If you're working with investors, do you think starting a cash flow for free? Remember, for free, a cash flow group played the, the first Friday of every month. Whatever you want to do for some of your local investors and, and get that in there. Or how about this? How about the agents in your area that you know, you know, want to work with investors or or like investing themselves, get them in a cash flow game and use it as an agent attraction tool. Does anybody like that one? Or or, or am I crazy? Yes. <laughs> I, I gotta yeah. play it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's First time around, it was it was frustrating, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually fun, and it's very realistic. 
you know? So. I don't know about y'all, but the first time I ever played it, I got so uh, analysis paralysis and the making the first move, I was just like, ah, like as if it was real money. And it was like, wow, it just brings up, don't be surprised if you've never played it before, if it doesn't bring up some really strange emotions, like just really strange. So can I add something? I agree, it does bring up emotions. So one of the things that the author said that if you really wanna teach somebody something, the best way to teach them is to play a game. And I like this game so much. I recently had a closing and my client was invest was interested in investing. So I gave them this game as a home as a housewarming gift. Mm -hmm. Nice. Right. Them, they have to play it. They have to play it um, together as a family. It was just a father, mother, and three children. But I mean like teenagers and grown. So, we used to play this at my old office. We would do like some sort of drink, lemon draw, samosas, whatever, and then play this game and break everybody up into different tables and play it. It was yeah. just, it, and then we would also fun. teach like the, the quadrant, the, the you know, employee uh, business owner quadrant thing and all that. It is, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. I've yeah. been playing with my son and we're going to play again this week. And uh, it's challenging, but boy, it reveals some things. So, you know, you really got to keep your debt down and make the right moves and be, yep. be prepared for life's curveballs. Yep. Yes. <laughs> That's like the game of life. Draw a card, yes. now you're pregnant. And no. I could not, no way I could drink or anything else and play, this, <laughs> pay attention. And I'm using the, the, the sheet instead of the cash, mm -hmm. which is so much easier than counting all that cash. Or if you lose half your cash, you don't have to count your cash and give it all up. Right. I had my son playing it with uh, him and his girlfriend and a group of people, and um, he's an engineering program right now, but he loved it. I mean, he came out like the second top two that had more money than the rest of the, you know, old folks like us. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think it's a great tool for, you know, teenagers or young adults to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great learning. Tool. And real estate, you know, in the Monopoly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's what I was going to say. A different version of Monopoly. Yes. Yes. But a version that my daughter will not play. My son won too. My daughter's like, she just was done. So maybe someday we'll play again. But right now, or back then, she was done. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it's it's a lesson. And it really is a lesson. And in, in at least the economics part of life where you have to play offense and defense. You can't do one and not the other, you know, you've got to, if you think of all those games, one of the keys was you had to keep, you had to acquire income producing assets. They hold their value and they, and they throw off income and you do have to play defense too. You can't buy a lot of junk and toys and stuff like that. You know, um, I mean, you can, but you'll find yourself the rat in the rat race continuing just with bigger dollars, you know? So, so can you play it by yourself and kind of, see how it works or do you have to have someone with you you can join you one be. of the games with other people okay yeah. they're strangers it would i would definitely encourage you to play with others who've already played it because they'll help you along learning some of the the nuances you know hey okay. laura can you put that url in the chat box to go to that yeah i'll put it in right now good idea yep yeah. um Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, Hang on I, one second. I got something. Yeah, I was going to go then let's turn it over to you. Yep. Oh, thank you. You go then. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, perfect segue. So Kendra and I had a great call today, strategy call, and I was going over floor target game. So raise your hand if you remember me discussing floor target game when you're setting your goals, right? So floor is minimally acceptable. Uh, target is what you really believe you're shooting for, but game is if you really hit it out of the park. And the way you want to do it is your conventional wisdom would say you go for the target, which is the middle. Everybody agree? Our, normally our brains tell us go right for the middle, just like with gas, right? Gasoline you know, or whatever. But the way it works, the way we work, the way we work with our hearts and our minds is um, it's better to challenge yourself and shoot for the game. Game is if you, again, hit it out of the park. 
And so if you imagine, let's say your goal is to get, you know, five appointments next week. That's your, that would be your, your, your small selves, your small mind target, five appointments next week. Minimally acceptable will be one, one appointment. Okay. But let's say you decided, you know what, I'm going to listen to Gary. I'm going to go for the game, which is 10 appointments next week. I'm going to shoot for 10 appointments next week. Would you agree that chances are your level of thinking is going to, going to, um, ramp up to the next higher level to figure out what it is you have to do to get the 10 appointments. Would you agree? Your thinking would change to match the goal. In this case, 10, 10 appointments. You might not hit 10. You may only get seven, but which is better? Seven appointments or five appointments? Seven. So you really go for the game. You put the game out there and what happens, it becomes habit forming. You get used to it. And most of us are entrepreneurs. And we're used to beating ourselves up when we don't hit our goals. If you'd say, well, Gary, I hit a shot for 10, I only got seven. Remind yourself that left to your own devices, you would have only shot for five and maybe you only got four. Okay. So you get used to that and you realize that you actually exceeded what your, what your small mind would, was, uh, would originally projected, which is five. And you get used to doing that. It becomes a habit. That becomes your habit. It's a new habit. That becomes your new normal. Okay. Now, does it take discipline? Absolutely. And you have to be patient, definitely in this business, because we've automatically got a 30 to a 60 day closing window. And that's all normal deals. Commercial could be a year, you know, or more. So, but that aside, the time frame of a transaction in real estate is in most cases, you're going to swing the bat for three months before you finally hit one. Okay. But then all of a sudden you're going to hit two, three, four at a time. So you will have Three months of, of scarcity, followed by a month of abundance. But that becomes your new normal. And you get used to the fact that you've got to constantly be feeding your pipeline. Have one eye on today, serve your today clients, and one eye on tomorrow, prepare your tomorrow clients. Um, and that all takes discipline and willpower and patience. And that really is the, is the secret. You cannot give up. You just never, never give up, right? To keep swinging the bat. You know what's going to work. Chances are you've had success before. Right. And people don't just teach this stuff because it looks good on paper. It's because it works, you know, but we also know that sometimes you got to keep swinging that bat before you get a hit. And in baseball, when everybody, when somebody gets in a slump in baseball hitting, what, what do the coaches tell them? Give it, give up and sit on the bench. Just keep swinging. Keep playing. You keep swinging. You got to swing your way through the slump, you know? So in any case, uh, I wanted to share that with you because I know we're into the second quarter now. We just had the, the uh, end of first quarter meeting two, two weeks ago. And I want you to keep that in mind and set your, set your goals for this month, for April. Set them for the remainder of the quarter, which is end of June. And remind yourself of what you want to accomplish this year by the end of December. And keep, keep reminding yourself of those things. I suggest you do it daily, if certainly minimum weekly, you know. So keep your head in the game and keep setting up those calls with me, okay? So keep setting them up. Any questions? Okay, Gina, take us home, sister. Oh man, after that inspirational talk. <laughs> All right, two things. One, this Wednesday team meeting. So be there. Um, second off, I was coaching with Maxwell today and he said, he goes, everybody says they wanna wait. And they don't want to, 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 you know, go on the market. And I'm like, buyers or sellers? He said, sellers. I'm like, why are sellers waiting? And he said, because they don't have anything to move into. I said, are they moving up or down? He said, up. And I'm like, well, okay. Run your reports on days on market for the price range that they're in. Let's say they're in a $300,000 house. Run your report for list price versus sales price ratio and days on market. So in that range, the lower end, you're going to see a really high list price to sales price ratio, 99 to 105 to 110%, somewhere in there, because prices are going, as you guys agree, and the lower price points are going for way over what they're listed at, right? And then run the report again for the price range you're going into. Let's say they're going into 750,000. Run that range of maybe 750 to 850 and look and see what the list price versus sales price ratio is and what your days on market are. You're going to probably see higher days on market and a much lower list price to sales price ratio. And he's like, 
I do. And I'm like, exactly. When the market's going up like that and you're buying up, that's when you want to do it because you can get top dollar for what you're selling and you can bargain and negotiate a little bit on the upper side or at least not pay massive over on that upper side. So it actually makes sense. So he's taking those two reports back to all the people that said, we want to sell, we want to move up, but we can't right now. So helpful. That was helpful. Now I got a question. What about for the buyers that want to wait? For the buy okay, I want to wait until the market settles down. Yes. And how sky higher interest rates going to go? The feds yeah. are talking four raises right now, minimum this year. Mm -hmm. So I would go to my loan officer and I would have them run a little graph for the average price point in your area. And what does a 1%, a 2%, a 3% and a 4% uh, raise in interest rates do for their house payment for the same exact price house? So yeah, I had or some stuff, we have them, they can kick it out just like that. Most of them have it already built in their marketing pieces, but get something like that and know your actual numbers. Like if the prices go down $5,000, but the interest rate goes up 1%, your price point's going to be bleh. Yeah, I did that Aren't for one client. What Gary is doing right here. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I had a client, I had that done by a lender for one of my clients. I tried to get him to do that before the first, uh, the feds went up in March on this increase. Yep. And I had him do it. I said, for 1%, it was going to cost him $300 a month more. He Bingo. Didn't and he then didn't go budge. backwards to how much the house has to go down. He didn't budge. So now I'm just, I'm kind of, kind of want to mastermind as to what other people are saying to their clients who say, oh, I want to wait the markets. There's going to be more houses in the area. And then the price is going down. And I ask him, when is that going to be? Look at what Gary is doing. This is huge. You can't. So here's the thing. You cannot time the market. You right. can time separate markets but you can't time the exact market. So I can say uh, in uh, Phoenix, it's doing this, it's going down. I, it's probably not, but, but in Phoenix, it's going down already, but here it's not. So I can time if I'm moving out of the area. But if I'm moving in the area, the answer to that is this, is you take a piece of paper and you start drawing, I'm gonna do it from, yeah, from your direction. You start drawing, this is what the market's doing. It's going up, up, up. And then you tell the person, you tell me when the market reaches its peak and then go like this. And they're going to go right there, stop. And you, But the only way that you can tell that it reached this peak is because I already tipped it back down again. And it works the same way with when does the market reach the bottom? Tell me when to stop. And you've already made it going up. The problem is you can only tell looking backwards. So are you going to keep on waiting or are Ooh. you going to pull the trigger? And for that, I need you to, you need to dig into their motivation. Like dig, 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 dig in the motivation. And then use that whatever that pain point is, when they're at a, I don't want to blah, blah. You said you don't want to raise your kids in a stinking apartment. You need to pull the dang trigger. Right. So that's what um, I'm going to dig in their motivation really, really hard. And then I'm going to work with them if they're really motivated, if they're not motivated and they don't, they're not motivated, they're not motivated. Go find the person who is. So here, I have a question cool. related to interest rates. I have a client and she's got three houses and every one of them needs at least $50,000 worth of repairs. She's typically only done the repair. She'll do a little repair and pay cash. And then next month she'll do a little more, a little more. Consequently, these houses are sitting empty for years. Three. I'm trying to come up with an analysis to say, go borrow 150,000 right now and fix these places up and get them in the market. She doesn't so, have to borrow at all. Huh? There you go. Here you go. Yeah, EXP has a relationship with Curbio, and they'll come in and make all the repairs. They'll give you an estimate. They'll make all the repairs and take all the money out at closing. There's no credit check, so they don't have to worry about, you know, I need a, you know, if they, they just go in and make the repairs and take it out at closing. They gave me a quote in 12 hours. Okay, so that's, that's one team. option. But okay, don't you know some investors that you can say, hey, I got a couple of, I got a lady that's got about three houses over here. They might be great for investors. That, well, she, doesn't, I know, yeah. but she, doesn't, she doesn't want to let go of them because she wants maximum profit. But it's taking so, her forever. And will, will show you the difference between making the repairs and not making the repairs. 
So Curbio, C U R B I O. Yes. yes. Yeah, and if she's sitting and on it, I'm working to get uh, someone onto one of our meetings. Um, I already put the message out to them on Thursday. They're swamped because they had 300 messages because of our big event that Bree and I were at. But as soon as they get back, just I'll hook them up with Gary. Yep. Yeah, they gave me a at uh, my house that I needed needed $140,000 worth of work. They will do everything they said, but go build up or out. They right. won't do that, but if it's in, yep. including roof, you know what I mean? If it's already in that structure, they will, they will do it, everything. They said there's no, um, they have no supply chain issues. Everybody's bonded, licensed, insured, all that good stuff. And they can do foundation repairs too? Yep. They yes. just won't add on to the property or build an extra floor above, okay. but everything else they'll do. Right. Okay. Hey, they, they have a good reputation. I mean, just like any company, you'll find an occasional naysayer, but for the most part, coast to coast, they had a good reputation. They're one of the EXP vendors, by the way, and, um, and they'll be yeah. at the shareholder summit. Um, so here's the website right here at curbio.com. Um, yeah, I know, I know people that were doing this in really high end, like senior areas with a lot of seniors and, and just, I mean, like, well, I'll just tell you where Santa Barbara, California. The Bay Area, a too. Lot, yep. A lot of homeowners were getting hit up by the flippers and selling a house for 600000 only to watch it sell for 900000 six months later. And we figured out, one of my agents after said, why don't we approach the sellers, connect them with the contractor through Curbio, who take all the risk for labor and repairs, and then the owner doesn't have to do anything except get additional profit, you know? So uh, it worked like a charm. So I, I definitely... Um, I would definitely have, is, is it? Um, yes. Okay. I would have her and set up a call. I don't mind if you want to do a three-way call with her. Uh, okay. You know, I'd like to get down there at some point. I'm not exactly sure when. Okay. You just let me know when you think the time's right. Well, she wants, she wants you to come and Sean to come end of April, early May. So look at your schedule. Okay. We better get going on that. Yeah. That's coming up fast. Okay. Yeah. I'll, to, um, I'll, I'll call Sean and maybe the three of us can get together and work out a game plan. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see some of her stuff in San Antonio too. Okay. So, Kay, this yes. is Jenna. I also use Curbio up against a contractor that I already had used locally for years, and they mm -hmm. were right in the same price range. Yep. So they okay. weren't higher than others or lower. They were right there. Yep. Okay. Well, the thing is, it takes away all that stress of trying to do everything yourself or trying to coordinate between the kitchen guy and the painter and the uh, carpeting guy and the floor. She, she's driving herself nuts she's driving all the contractors up she'll get them to come in she'll take the low bid and then they get mad because there's more work than what they bid and then they want to go up and then she's mad they're mad it's a mess yeah uh, so that's I've good seen, seen that before hey guys i want to show you this real quick so uh, gina was well, talking done. and um and um and other people are talking who remembers three three percent interest rates and how, how long ago was that? Not very long ago. Last year. Yeah, not, yeah, not too long ago. Yep. Earlier this went, year. Now they're at 5%. So here's yeah. a $250,000 mortgage, 30 mm -hmm. years, at 3%, $1,054 a month. Now it's 5% mm -hmm. in less than a year. So 5%, remember that, $1,054, $1,342. more. Now, Gamer. Take that mortgage amount and drop it down to you get back to that thousand fifty. So what? Two twenty? Two hundred? Right. Yeah, probably two hundred. <laughs> there you go. Oops. Yeah, close. Show them that. That's what you want to show them, Banana. 300. Well, yeah, again, that's what I showed them. But that yeah. guy, but that particular guy, he didn't want to budge. But I have a meeting with another client. Again, I was just looking for what other people are saying, but yeah. this is, you know, you know, masterminding, you know, what other gotcha. people are saying to their clients. Cause I know this, cause I've done this. I use yeah. Zillow um, affordability calculator and I show them this, like this lady recently, she was using some kind of calculator. I don't know where she get it from. And she kept calculating a five or $600,000 house at $2,500 a month. I said, no, sweetie, pull up the Zillow, um, affordability calculator and plug in that number. And it came up $3,200, $3,400 a month. She said, oh my God. 
but the other one didn't calculate that. I said, because the other one did not take into consideration taxes and insurance. I'm positive. Cause I looked at the mortgage, the mortgage was 2,500, but you didn't have to, you didn't have that. She said, oh, I have to pay that every month. I said, yes, ma'am, you do. It's part of your PITI. Well, well just to, and, th and by the way, this is $400,000 mortgage I'm doing now, which would be like a half million dollar house, which is very common today. Right. I mean, it's just amazing. 3% payment 1686. Right. And now, now the glass will go to 5%, 1686 yep. to 2147. That's $500 a month more. That's a, yep. that's a, that's a, yep. almost that's a huge, that's almost a third more. Yeah. You know, and than the, the original. That's this. This is getting serious. So, it so is. I, and I tell you what, guys, I'm hearing this from more of you around the country. You're starting to see more property, more signs out there, more properties up for sale. In fact, yeah. Heather Price was uh, going around her neighborhoods. She, I think, she said five new properties came up for sale in the last two weeks. Five. Yep. So supply and demand is going to start kicking in. Yep. So I told her. I said, for right now. Wherever, you, if you're in part of the country where April is your transition month, which is most parts of the country, I would go ahead and, and take the uh, the walkabout and go into full blown door knocking. If if your area is well past the mass stage and all that's kind of in the past, go straight to door knocking, guys, because you don't want to have five five homes in your neighborhood go up for sale because they heard from somebody else before they heard from you. You know. So make sure that you're 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 going. You got your neighborhood. Remember, you want to have investors and you want to have owner occupants. And right now, it's a time of the time to do door knocking. Actually, is what it started last month, if not two months ago. But you can't you can't redo this. Start now. Take your Saturdays and Sundays. Um, I know I hate to say it this way, but figure out what works in your neighborhood. Sometimes it's Saturday morning. Sometimes it's Saturday afternoon. Sometimes it's Sunday afternoon. It's very rarely Sunday morning, but. But pick your time, do your door knocking, you know, take them, take them a workbook, you know, a, a booklet, excuse me, take them a flyer, okay, and door knock and have that conversation because I guarantee you right now there are people out there thinking, gee, I really wish I could sell. I don't know what to do, if I should do it, what's, what's the market like? Make sure you're the person that, that they hear from first, you know. We, uh, we looked at what day the market went hot when I was a team leader in the Bay Area. And we went back 10 years and the day that the listings come on, you see a dramatic increase every single year is the day after Super Bowl. And it was year after year after year after year. It was after Super Bowl. And now I don't expect that to be true in Detroit or someplace where, you know, there's six feet of snow on the ground, but you can look historically back at the, the, the day listings went active and see exactly what it is in your area. Hmm. We call it the Super Bowl effect. It's exactly what we called it. Yeah. Yeah. In the Detroit, they might call it the the last time we out to shovel snow this year effect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, but Florida, Florida is just like you know what's funny in Florida? A lot of sellers want to sell in like the summer Phoenix. when it's blistering hot. Phoenix is the exact same too. It's yeah. it's Phoenix, nobody sells in the summer. Everybody sells the beginning, the end of summer. The, the beginning of yeah. fall when people start selling that's the hot market in phoenix really? yeah because nobody wants to you don't do squat in phoenix in august you <laughs> just don't you go from your house to your car and that's pretty much into the movie theater it's about it so if i like wanted me. to look at historical data in my mls how would i do that so you gotta play around with your porch just like you would play around with rpr i love the different MLS reports. I go in there and just start playing around and looking at stuff. You're some uh, some uh, uh, realtor boards will compile them for you. Most don't, but sometimes they do. Not in this area, I think so. Okay. How far back are you trying to go? The 10 years, like you said, 10 years. Oh. Because in our MLS, we can, uh, when we do our search criteria, there's active, inactive, and escrow, and uh, inactive not showing. However, there's a place called sold, right? And typically, it'll come up with zero to 180 days. But when you erase that, like, everything pretty much oh, comes yeah. up that's within the criteria. Yep. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Yeah. 
like when we were running some reports, sometimes we'll just run sold off a year, sorted out by date. And then you can pull a month by month report just by drawing a line across it. And after you've got it, the, the down and dirty one year. So you're okay. right. Yeah. yeah. But I recommend you get in there, you play. And then when you find a report you like, either write down the title of that report or save that title or whatever it is you have to do with your MLS. So you don't have to go back later and go, which stupid report was that and go clicking all back the way through it again, but find the ones that you, you like, and then numbers, use numbers to tell your story. I was talking with someone today about, they're like, I'm not, I don't feel competent. And I'm like, you're confident. That's what it is. And I'm like, the numbers take all that away. I mean, it doesn't, if someone can say, you know, the market's doing this. Actually, this is what the market's really doing. And there's competence in that. Yeah. Hey, hey Banana, we literally would do, we would set up dozens and dozens of reports and we would name them something strategic. So we would know what exactly what report was. And it'll all be very similar. They would just be January, February, March. And once you do it the first time, Banana, you're golden. You don't have to keep doing them over because you've got them saved. And that'll yeah. give you that information. And you'll you'll be able to see the determined patterns. Mm -hmm. And that's really important when it comes to marketing. If you know, for example, like again, April, you know, maybe it's always, you know, April 15th is the day or April 16th. And make sure you next year you start your door knocking, you know, at, at a minimum four weeks in advance, if not, if not, you know, six to eight weeks in advance. Because if they don't, they don't remember that if they if they list it on April 16th. They probably were thinking about it on February 16th. <laughs> January. You know? Yeah. That's true. It really is. If anyone ever yeah. says, like, I'm going to sell in fall, cut it in half because they're already there. Yeah. But those reports, we would, we'd would have dozens and dozens of them. You know, we just ran them on a regular basis and we kept the data. And it was really good for our investors, too, because, you know, nobody else had that stuff. They just weren't doing it. And we could say, look, you know, if you're going to flip a house, you better buy that thing, get it on a contract, you know, by, by October, so you can close on it by December, get the tax breaks, start remodeling in January, and, you know, be ready to target the listing in March, but the reality is you'd always be delayed to April, so we, we knew exactly what to tell them when the, when, the, you know, they, they loved it, you know, so homeowners, all that stuff we did, homeowners benefited just as much, you know, so. Um, okay, we always seem to, to this, these meetings always seem to get better as, as, as the meeting goes on, you know, so <laughs> all this stuff comes out, but, uh, but I do, I, guys, I just want to say thanks to Kay again, Kay, thank you for taking your precious time to do this, and, and anybody Sorry. on the team, yeah, I want to, you know, emphasize that, remember, this is for you, and if you, if there's something that you really enjoy or appreciate, or some tactic or strategy you have, or a tool, you know, please, please share. We'll put you up here and give you your, your 15 minutes of fame. And that's what this was all about, giving you opportunity to develop yourself and grow as a person. Um, you obviously want to make more commissions, but be a full, a whole person. And these type of things will help you do that. Speaking in front of people, it's a wonderful thing, you know. So, and by the way, my first recording, uh, Christine found a video of me from years ago on YouTube. I was on a dot. Oh, uh, Gina, you remember this? This was um, the doc, Debbie's doc in Picosa. And I'm so. Oh my there. gosh, I totally remember that. That's where I fell in uh, yeah. on the set board the first time I ever set board. And everyone said, you can put your phone in your pocket. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. And I'm so glad I didn't. <laughs> yeah. So, in any case, I don't know. I don't know. She, she laughed at it. That's how bad it was, you know. Back when I look back at my old stuff, I wonder how how in the world they ever teach anything. But but the point is, is um uh, start just start, and uh, you'll find yourself uh you know getting more business as a result. So, okay, I know we're covering a lot of ground, and like we should probably call it quits. Um, but thanks again, everybody, for doing this. This is awesome. So next week, this is definitely one you want to make sure you're into is uh, Demi Stevens, who's been the editor and publisher for all six of the training programs and all seven of my books and soon to be eight, is going to show you guys how easy it is to, to write your own book. You're going to be totally blown away because it's not probably anything like you think it is. You know, you're not, you're not writing a novel like Nicholas Sparks. You're basically, I, bet I know what it is, Gary, but I'm not saying. Okay. Because <laughs> I already have one company where I have a book. Okay. I, yeah. With my picture and everything. Good. 
-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 a great thing to do. Boy, to it really is. set you apart from the crowd. Wherever you go, to like a like a any public event, like the your you know quarterly chiropractors association dinner. Imagine showing up not at the first meeting, show up at the second meeting with with twenty five books to give them to the people you met in the first meeting, signing everything. All right. So things like that really set you apart from the crowd. People people want to work with the experts and they'll perceive you as an expert when you have a book. And it's all I should be is your story. Your story with a technique or strategy, and that's it. You know? In any case, that's next week. And guess what? The week after that, the 25th, um, the CEO from Ideal Estate is going to teach a classwork. As I told him, I said, I got into it, and I'm, I'm getting results, guys. I'm already using it, but I feel like I need some instruction. And I said, we were all confused about the the – um, two, the two month thing and the code. And so he's going to come on on the 25th and show us how to make the most of uh, ideal estate. Okay? Good. Maybe he can show me how to get my $40 back. <laughs> I had the same thing happen to me. I thought, you know, use this code and you get the whatever, the two month for free thing. So I'm not sure what happened there, but I think it happened in Naomi too. It did, but you know what? I went into the chat and asked about the two month free program and they were not aware of it until I gave them the code that you gave me this afternoon, Gary. Mm -hmm. And they refunded me my forty dollars right Ooh. off the bat. Yeah. Are you going through the EXP back through SkySlope or, no. or I went straight to the I went okay. straight to their website. So, so yeah. if you go straight to their website, then can you link it to SkySlope or it won't? Um, I've only, I started it today and I just set up the profile. So I haven't done that yet, Lisa. Okay. Yeah. I haven't played with it as much. There's so much to learn. <laughs> I know, I know, okay. and then, but it just so happened. I just signed up for about an hour before this webinar. So yeah, but they will give you a refund. If you tell them that, you know, you're supposed to be signing up under that code. Thanks for sharing that. I didn't realize that. Yes. What? Gary. I was just going to let it go, but um, well, we'll have him the Monday the 25th. And, you know, I think Gina's I'm, wondering what that code was. I think it's PBP, right? A PPB, peanut, PPB. peanut butter, peanut butter. Yeah, or sorry, pink peanut butter, PPB. Pink peanut pink butter. Peanut. Yeah, <laughs> pink peanut butter. Yeah, <laughs> it does sound oh. awful, but yeah, it is PPB. Yes. Yeah. By the way, peanut butter and jelly is one of my favorite things to eat. So when I travel, that's what I eat in the car. That's is there anything that's not your favorite thing to eat, sweetheart? What's that? Is there anything that's not your favorite thing to eat, sweetheart? No, that's true. Not really. Probably anything. I, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, food. You know, that's why I always tell people when I go to a restaurant, I always love it because they have my favorite favorite thing. And what's that? Food. <laughs> food. Yeah. food. Yeah. Love it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, hit the road here. But uh, thanks thanks once again for everybody sharing, contributing. Um, remember, in, invite your guests to these. This is critical. We've I can't tell how many people have, have uh, eventually joined the team just by coming to class and seeing how crazy we are, but also seeing all the good stuff we have. You know, um, nothing feels better than knowing you're part of a of a good community that's that's supportive and talented. And my my gosh, we got some amazing. You know, if you guys didn't, didn't were paying attention, you notice Kay is a PhD, right? She was a hospital executive uh, prior to uh, real estate. So it's just one example. Every one of you brings something to the table, you know. So keep that in mind and uh, and show it off to your to your your prospects. Bring them in the class and uh, let them see what we're all about. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No, Kay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Kay. And, and Nellie, no, Nelly, you can invite anybody to class, and we and we really encourage you to invite people who are not EXP in in the class. To you know? this Monday night one, yeah. This to is the, the Monday one. Night one. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Wednesday is the second Wednesday of the month, which is two nights from tonight, like Gina was saying. That's our monthly team call, guys. Definitely be on that because it seems like forever since we had the last one. I know it's only been a month. Um, but we're, I want to show you some stuff that's really going to help you. Uh, and that one, that one would be internal. Very rarely do we invite outside guests to our monthly team call. We have done it, but maybe once or twice a year. That's something you want to run by me first. 
because I know the content and we want to make sure um, you know it's appropriate. So so this uh, this Wednesday night would be one that would just be internal for us. You know, Monday Night Live, carte blanche, consider it open to the public, invite your guests. So okay. How many times have I said I'm gonna go? Probably four times already. So <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll see you in your one-on-ones. Hope you have a good rest of the week, guys. Um, God bless you and your families. And uh, stay safe and keep swinging the bat. Okay? Thank you. Thank Bye, you. Aloha. Bye, it's Bye everyone. Aloha. Bye, everyone. Aloha. Aloha. Bye-bye. <laughs>